Joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man that's going to be a part of UFC 227, August 4th in LA. It's Ricky Simone, of course, living the good life out there in Hawaii. So I saw you playing a little uh, coconut football with Tyson Nam. So, so tell me what coconut football is. Uh, it was just us bored. That's it. <laughs> we were out in the sun all day. Uh, we had nothing to do. So we're like, just pick some up, start throwing at each other. That's about it. <laughs> And, uh, you know, obviously you've been uh, – we talked about this potential match of the last time we talked, a fight that was uh, potentially going to happen back in the King of Cage. Uh, I think – did you tell me this this fight was actually kind of approached you multiple times on the regional scene? Yeah, yeah, a few times. Um, we were supposed to fight at promotion in California, I forgot what it was called. Um, that got scrapped. And then a few times the King of Cage also got scrapped. So it hasn't happened yet, but – no, no, nowhere else to run. It's happening at UFC 227. I, I noticed on your social media, you, you have a little nickname for him, Little B. I'm <laughs> guessing I know what the B stands for. <laughs> I, I mean, it's whatever you want it to be. <laughs> I think there's, there's. I guess maybe, uh, I think most people may kind of figure out uh, when, when they know the backstory what you might think the, the B stands for. But, uh, you know, as you, you think about when you're going to prepare to fight him back in, in March of 2017, in comparison to now, what do you see as a difference in his game? Um, I mean, he's only had a, a few fights since then, you know. So, I mean, I'm sure he's young, you know, he's growing. But I mean, I, I mean, after watching his last few fights, I don't think the only thing he could have really gotten better at that I've seen is maybe some experience, you know, that that after on time. But um, I don't know. I think it's the same same Benito. I mean, of course, we, we've seen you inside the UFC cage already, that, that fight you had earlier this year. I mean, how would you say you're a, a different fighter now as opposed to uh, earlier this year? Um, well, definitely experience. I mean, I've had, I've had a ton of fights in the last year. Um, um, and But, I mean, I, I'm someone who's always working on getting better. If I, if I feel like I struggle in one area, I spend a lot of time in that area. So um, I think I've gotten better overall as a fighter and as an athlete. I've been uh, working with a – my strength and conditioning coach uh, since that, since I got actually finally got a little bit of a break. So I've been working on my strength and, and being trying to be the strongest band weight in the world. So uh, I think that's one of the, one of the main, main reason or one of the major things I've improved on is, is uh, my athletic ability, but also I'm always grinding in there with uh, Fabiano Scherner at Gracie Baja, trying to work out my jujitsu and, and, and my striking is always coming along too. In terms of strength and conditioning, how, how do you make sure you're not putting on, you know, too much muscle to where maybe it's kind of, kind of, uh, you know, especially when you start getting into the weight coat it, where that may become an issue? Yeah, uh, my uh, my trainer, Jess Moore, kind of writes it all out. He does a, uh, we did a body uh, fat comp, you know, right after camp, in the middle of camp, and we're going to do it at the end of camp, just kind of monitoring it. And, uh, you know, just, he he's, he's, He's just done a good job of just keeping it so I'm not putting on too much muscle and just kind of keeping that ba- base strength. But uh, but my numbers have been going up, and uh, I'm ready to start um, pushing a little bit more, start peaking to beat up little B. I know you have in the past have talked about you like to do the first part of your camp there in Hawaii, and then the last part you, you go back to Portland. Is that the same plan for this one? Yeah, same plan. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Uh uh, I've been out here for a couple of weeks now. I'm getting ready to wrap it up here and, and head back to Portland and uh, stay sharp with my coaches over there. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, this is the best I've felt in a long time. I feel like that last year was just crazy. It was just nonstop. I was in camp, uh, you know, always having to try to stay ready, waiting for an opportunity. So I got to relax a little bit. I got to focus on getting my body healthy. And, uh, yeah, so this is the best I've felt in a long time. How much do you credit that to your strength and conditioning of, of the things you're doing now of why you feel this way? Yeah, no, you know, going from camp to camp, you get beat up, you know, it's hard to avoid that. So uh, we just spent a lot of time and, you know, just getting the body healthy. So, uh, um, you know, I owe a lot to my, my coach, Jess Moore, on uh, sticking with me through, through the last few months and, and helping me grow as an athlete. Uh, of course, this fight's in California. Everyone knows California has kind of been on the forefront with weight cutting. And, and one of the things that came out uh, about a week or two ago was Andy Foster is now going to be releasing when it comes to what you weigh on fight night. Is that something that you can know how much your opponent is actually weighing on fight night? Uh, I don't 
don't care. <laughs> It'll matter to me, you know. Uh, I, I mean, I'm every, you know, I know how it goes. I've been cutting weight. Uh, I've been wrestling my entire life, so I know I know how to do it. Uh, I think I figured it out to where, you know, I don't I don't die to make 135 anymore. It's not easy, but you know, if I as long as you stay on it on the nutrition side, and don't try to rush the weight cut. You know, uh, I'm not trying to have a huge size advantage. Um, I'm not trying to cut last minute just to have a huge size advantage. You know, I'm I'm just doing it smart, making sure the cut goes smooth, and to make sure I'm going to perform my best on fight day. You know, the weight cutting, a lot of people believe it's, if not the biggest topic, one of the biggest topics. And I've been asking some fighters this, and when I talked to Syed Awad, he said that he believed health insurance was actually the biggest issue that, that fighters have. For you, what do you think is the biggest issue in the sport right now? Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's, 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 uh, there seems to be a lot, but I mean, I, I'm at a point, I'm at a point right now where, uh, I'm just grateful, you know, like, uh, there's a, I see a lot of, uh, a lot of fighters like complaining and stuff and, and I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I think I just know like the struggle outside of, uh, outside of the UFC, um, and, and know what it's like to fight on top, top promotions, but doesn't feel like it, you know? So, so I, I'm super happy where I'm at right now, and and uh, I'm sure some. So I'll I have some something to say about so, some of the issues, um, you know, further along in my career. But you know, I, I can't help but to just be super happy where I'm at right now. That's where I think fans just don't understand the the struggle that it is being a regional fighter and um, everything everything that goes into being the business side of being a regional fighter. I, I think that some people have this perception, like you know, you guys are you know, it's your full-time job and you don't have a job outside of fighting where that's just not the reality. Yeah, no, it was, you know, just, I was the LFA world champ. I was defending my belt and, you know, it's, you know, I was struggling, you know, I was struggling to make it to the fight. So, uh, you know, having to work and train, it was, it was just taking a toll on me. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, that <laughs> it's, it's easy to complain once you get accustomed to, you know, to, to the bigger stage and everything. But, but, uh, you know, the struggle was real for me. So I, I'm just, I, like I said, I'm just happy where I'm at right now. What was the oddest part-time job you ever had? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I didn't do anything crazy. I wasn't like a male stripper or anything. I didn't do anything crazy like that. But, uh, you know, I just kept it nice and simple, you know, work construction. Uh, you know, I've done, I've done just about it all. I've been working since a young age. I, I've done work coffee shops. I've worked at McDonald's. I've. Done, you know, I've done landscaping, construction, fencing deck. I, you know, I've done it all. So, uh, you know, I'm happy to, to say this is my full-time job. This is all I'm doing right now. <laughs> what was your first job ever? Um, not under the table. <laughs> uh, my first, yeah, uh, my first job ever was, I think, uh, worked at McDonald's in high school. How many people that you worked with at McDonald's would just be completely floored that you're a professional MMA fighter. Uh, they probably wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I mean, would you? Did you ever, you know, growing up, think like, "Hey, I, I think I, I'm going to be a, a professional fighter"? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I thought I would do something with sports. I, I never, you know, I never knew what I was going to do. But uh, I always like to think that. I always, I always said like, I don't know how I got into fighting. It kind of just happened, you know. But really, I was like, I feel like. My dad and I have an older brother that's only a year and a half older than me, and they just kind of like bred me for that, you know. Like my older brother would just beat beat me up all the time. My dad bought us boxing gloves and said, you know, at a young age, they're like if you guys have problems, you guys just figure it out yourselves. Don't come, don't come to us. So, and then you know, I started wrestling from a young age, and so I think it was always there. I always had that that fighter mentality, but I I just wasn't sure if I was going to do it. Now I noticed on your Instagram, uh, it was I think within a week or two when you got back down to Hawaii, you, you kind of noted that you felt like you're going to have to watch your watch your hair at night that someone might try to uh, cut off a, your your mullet. Uh, so is yeah. it still glorious? <laughs> oh man, Tyson Nam's jealous or something. I see he's always trying to trying to get some scissors and cut this off, but it's not going anywhere. It's, you got to let the flow go. <laughs> I mean, you, you got you got to get on Jason House to get you some T-shirts about the mullet. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it's a new age. It's the new age mullet. I call it the Rolex of mullets. <laughs> but of course, this fight is uh, August the fourth. Uh, any predictions on how you get the win? Uh, I, I see a finish. I, I don't think Benito will be able to keep up with my pace. So I, I, 
I, I truly I truly believe that. I, I, I think I, I told you that um, going into that Chico fight, and Chico's a veteran. I don't think I didn't think he was gonna be able to keep up with my pace. And um, yeah, so so I, I'm seeing I'm seeing a finish in the second or early third. And of course, uh, this all goes down here. August 4th, UFC 227. Ricky, as always, appreciate time and uh, let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Yeah, follow my fan page on Facebook, Ricky, uh, Ricky Simone, and uh, my Instagram and Twitter, Ricky Simone UFC.